Shalom, Israel. It's, it's going, going down. 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 It's that time again. Come join us at the 49th annual Passover. Shalom, this is Captain Rajazai of the IHBK down here in Atlanta, Georgia. Inviting you to the IHBK's 49th annual Passover. You understand? Passover this year will be held on March 30th at the Roosevelt Ballroom. It's the second Hudson Street, Yonkers, New York. And we invite all blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians to this year's Passover in the spirit of brotherhood. That's what the Passover is about. That's what the ISBK is about. It's brotherhood. You understand? That is a lot. Come on, March 30th at Sunday. All Israel is invited for the 49th annual feast of the Passover. Brought to you by Commanding General Yahana and the ISBK. So you better not miss it. Shalom. And I'm Officer Ashia Rakha with the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge under commanding General Yohanna. If you don't have a head, then your body is dead. And we only have for blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. God's chosen people. The number one man, woman, and child on the face of the planet. We've been lied to about our day. We've been raped, robbed, and raised for everything that belongs to us. We don't, we don't have a homeland. You ask a so-called black man, where did you come from? He'll tell you Africa. The problem is, is it's 54 countries in Africa, and you don't know which one you came from. It's 1,500 dialects in Africa, and you don't know which one you spoke. You've been lied to. The so-called white man has raped, robbed, and destroyed him, and you think he's not going to pay for his crimes? You've out your goddamn mind. You got that scripture for me? Hey. Chapter 2, verse 12. Woe to him that builds a town with blood. Hold on. The scripture said woe. Woe means destruction in the scriptures. It says destruction to him that builded his town with blood. All I know is 99 million Negroes died on the way over here. That's right. Woe unto him. 77 million North Native, Native American Indians got slaughtered over here. Woe unto him. 70 million Taino Indians slaughtered. Woe unto him. And along with everybody else that the so-called white man is killed. The white man has come over here and slaughtered a half a billion Israelites. And you think he's not going to pay? Read that scripture again. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 12. Woe to him. That build is a town with blood. The white man built this entire country with bloodshed. We didn't come, we didn't catch no airplane over here, first class seats, and arrive in America to start a new life. That ain't how we got over here. We were drug over here on cargo slave ships, packed up like sardines. We were treated like slaves. We were destroyed. And the scripture says, woe unto him. Because the white man has to pay for what he's done to us. See, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans don't know a damn thing about justice. We don't know nothing about justice. All we know is the white man rape, robs, and murders, and we gotta forgive. That's why so much animosity between brothers. Because if a brother, you get into it with one of your brothers, guess what? He step on your shoe, and you're ready to blow his brains out. That's only from oppression. You're so sick of all of this nonsense happening to you, and the white man suffering no consequences for what happened to him, that you become frustrated with your own brothers. But the Bible promises justice. Right. And this is what your Christian preacher will never tell you. That it's justice in these scriptures. Yes, Give me Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. The white man has to pay for what he's done. It's only right. You say you believe it come. You see, you say you believe it what goes or what comes around. Well, the Bible is full of justice. And the white man has over 400 years of rape, rob, and murder to pay for. Bloodshed to pay for. And if you go back further, it's looking more like 2,000 years when you go into the Greeks and the Romans. Because we were slaves to them as well. Hey. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. If any man have an ear. Hold on. We all got ears. So this Bible ain't talking about the ears on the side of your head. That's the Bible right. is saying if any man got understanding, get ready to understand what I'm about to bring out. Verse 10. He that lead us into captivity. Didn't the white man lead us into captivity, so-called black man? Didn't he pack us up in slave ships? Didn't he drag us over here? Last time I checked, we didn't get a first-class flight. 
flight over here. Last time I checked, we didn't take a casual car ride over here. Last time I checked, we didn't even hike over here on foot. We were drug over here on cargo slave ships, packed up like sardines. Well, the scripture says he, meaning the white man, because didn't nobody else drag us over here. That lead us into captivity. Keep reading. Shall go into captivity. The scripture says he is going into captivity. That's only justice. That's only right. The one thing that blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans don't know a damn thing about is justice. And the Bible is full of justice. Keep reading. He that killeth with the sword. The white man, and I don't know nobody else that has killed more people with the sword than the so-called white man. The white man is a walking, talking holocaust. He kills every goddamn body. I mean, good night. Sometimes I sit back and I think and I just be like, well, damn. The, the white man's idea of heaven seemed like he gonna destroy the whole planet and he be floating out of space somewhere in a tin can. That's right. The white man slaughters everything. Well, guess what? He's going to have to pay. And that's something that our people have never seen happen to the so-called white man. The white man has not paid for a damn thing. Yeah. Well, the scriptures say, he that leadeth in the captivity shall go in the captivity. He that killeth with the sword shall be killed with the sword. That's right. the truth. the sweet baby Jesus what? under the Christmas tree. The baby version, because the big version too scary, we like to pray the baby Jesus. That Jesus, keep reading, must be killed with the sword. His ass must be killed with the sword. That's and that's right. only justice. Get a most high on hand. That's right. See, we're going to have to deal with this Bible. Then the white man sets up laws and says that it's against the law to steal. That's right. You know what? You're going to go to jail for 15 to 20 years if you steal a piece of candy on your third strike. Right. The white man sets up these rules. Well, what strike one you still in the land for you? What strike two you still in the whole group of people for you? And damn sure strike three had to be you still in their identity. Good. So under the three strike law, you gotta go right now. You gotta go with shackles and chains. And the scripture said, he that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. That's so right. since you don't want to abide by your own laws, your own rules, the most high established some laws that still go send you in chains and shackles. Give me Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. Because we're going to have to deal with this. The white man must pay for the rape, rob, murder, and thievery that he's perpetuating waited on this planet. Right. right. And all praises to Yahweh, the most high power in the Hebrew. The Bible is full of the justice that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans have never received in this land. That's right. You got that scripture for me? Because we all want to get to the kingdom of heaven. We all feel like the big pearly gates out of space is the place to get to. But I got news for you, Christians. That ain't got a goddamn thing to do with this Bible. The Bible makes it very clear, very extremely extraordinarily clear what the kingdom of heaven is. And hell ain't some spooky place you're going on the ground with some red man with a pitchfork that's going to torment you for all time. That ain't in the Bible. But we finna get some understanding about this justice that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are, go are going to receive at the hand of the Most High God. Read. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 1. For the Lord we have mercy on Jacob. Jacob in the forefather, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. But don't take my word for it. Let's read the next line. Read. And we'll yet choose Israel. No, nah, he gonna choose the white man. And we'll yet choose Israel. It had to say the Chinese man. And we'll yet choose Israel. Well, my people wanna be Islam, and my people wanna be Muslims. So, by chance, did it say the Arab man? We'll yet choose Israel. God damn, we a black group of people, so I know he gonna choose the African. And yet, choose Israel. The most high gonna choose Israel. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, but I ain't done. Let's get some more understanding. Read. And we'll set them in their own land. Because if you recall earlier, I said we've been raped, robbed, and murdered. We ain't in our own land. You asked the black 
black man, where you come from, he gonna tell you Africa. The problem is, is you can't tell me what country you came from in Africa. The truth is, black man, you're so destroyed, you don't even know where you come from. Keep reading. And the strangers shall be joined with them. Well, sweet brother, Jesus came to save everybody, so the strangers are going to be joined with us. You know how your fat, fluffy Christian preacher like to talk, and God is here for the, this group of people, and God love everybody. The problem is, is that ain't in the Bible. We're going to do what your fat, fluffy Christian preacher ain't never done. We're going to go inside of the Bible, and we're going to get some type of understanding, and we're going to read this thing in its proper, perfect context. That's right. Read. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So they gonna be there. They gonna be cleaving. The other nations are already starting to cleave. Can't you say that? You, can't you see that you set the pace? Can't you see that you set the standard on the face of the earth? You turn your head backwards and there's a slanty-eyed bastard all the way in China somewhere with his head on backwards. I turned on the damn internet and I see Chinese people doing trap rap. I don't. I can't even understand what the hell they said. But I heard. Let me go ahead. I see some Chinese bastard do a trap round. The other nations are already cleaving to you, Israel. Keep reading. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. Damn right, we're going to bring them to their place. Because God, according to your Christian preacher, got a place for everybody. Everybody's going to be in the kingdom. Keep reading. And the house of Israel shall possess them. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But it was wrong, because we got brought over in slavery and they possessed us. So why is Israel possessing a group of people? I need you to wipe that Bible up and read it right. You had to read it wrong, King. Okay. And the house of Israel shall possess them. Hey, God damn it. This brother got to be reading the wrong scripture. Because it said the house of Israel shall possess them. Now I thought it was wrong to have slaves. You see how the white man run this BS on you? He, he put you in chains and shackles. He make you a slave. But when it comes time for his simple behind to become a slave, ah, oh, that ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. Read that again because it sounds beautiful to my ears. It sounds like justice to me. The only thing that blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans don't know a damn thing about. Boom. And the house of Israel shall possess them. Just like you possess your phone, the house of Israel is going to possess them. I can't say like you possess your car because you don't own your car. You don't own your house. You don't pay taxes on your house. They're going to come take them up. You understand what I'm trying to say? But I can't say you do own your phone. You're walking around talking to what? Let's take that back. A lot of y'all don't even own your phone. Whatever the hell you own, understand that the nation of Israel is going to possess them. Just like you possess whatever it is that you own. Keep going. In the land of the Lord for service, for service. So they gonna be working for us. Keep going. And hey, man, get your woman ready too, cause she gonna work. Keep going. And they shall take them captive, whose captives they were. Cause the Bible is full of justice. Like I said, the only thing Black Hispanics and Native Americans don't know a damn thing about. He said we gonna take them captives, whose captives we were. But I got news for you, Israelite. You've been captive to everybody on the planet. It's 18 nations on the planet, and you've been captive to all of them. We're going to take them captives whose captives we were. And it is an amazing, beautiful feeling. Keep reading. And they shall rule over their oppressor. Black Hispanics and Native Americans don't know a damn thing about ruling shit. You don't even rule your house. That, that, that little funky booty. Lord, you got running through your house, you're saying screwing everybody in the neighborhood, she run your household. Right. You don't run a damn thing. All you do is run your mouth occasionally, and most of the time you won't even stand up to her. Well, that's going to become a day, and that's going to become a time. The black Hispanic and Native American man, you're going to rule over your oppressors. That's right. The people that lock you up at an alarming rate, and that's according to the Bible. That's See, people right. say that they believe in what goes around, comes around. People claim that they believe in karma, but the truth is, is they want to give you this Christianity nonsense that say that everybody was created equal, even though the white man has done all of this to us, he must not pay for what he's done. You got a question for the king? Brother, we had this conversation before, when you asked me about Jesus Christ dying. 
And my, and my brother broke it down to you so beautifully. Yes, Christ did die for our sins. But the most important thing is that he rose. He rose up. And when he rose up, matter of fact, you are saying, outside of him just rising up, Christ is coming back to redeem us. And that's the most important thing, you are saying, that the Christ is coming back to redeem the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Because the truth is, is we the only people that don't have a Savior. Give me a Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. Because it's a promise that pertains to us because we're in a certain situation. We're in a destroyed state. we at the bottom. And Christ is praying. We're the only people that need to be saved. What does the white man need to be saved from? Himself? Now, and, psh, let the, well, what I like to say, let white people worry about white people's business. You know what I'm saying? The black Hispanics and Native Americans are the ones that need to be saved. So let's find out a little bit about Christ. You got that Revelation chapter oh, 2 verse 9? Revelations chapter 2. Verse 9, I know thy work. The most I say, I know you're working hard. I know I know that your life, is, 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 since you've been in America, has been a perpetual state of working in slavery. Keep reading. And tribulation. And he know no matter how hard you try to get up, you seem to always find yourself at the bottom. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Keep reading. Listen very closely to this next part, though. And poverty. But thou are rich. The scripture said, but we are rich. Right. Why are we rich? Because the promises of a savior, the promises of Jesus Christ, the one that you call Jesus Christ, whose name is Yahweh Shai in the Hebrew, it pertains to us. Now give me Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. See, we're going to talk about Christ. See, every people want to put Christ in two states all of the time. They want to come and they want to talk about baby Jesus, baby Jesus, baby Jesus, when he weakened the fleshless. Then people want to come back and talk about, well, Jesus dead, Jesus dead. Well, Jesus is coming back and he's going to be alive and well and he's coming back for a specific group of people. Right. So let's start focusing on the alive and well Jesus and him coming back. If you recall, the last scripture said that the promises pertain to a group of people. I'm saying that the promises are the pertain to the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who are Israelites. And now we're about to get it out of Christ's mouth. Matter of fact, let's go up to verse about 21 and let's get some contextual understanding. Right. Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. Then Jesus went thus and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. So, 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 so Christ is in the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Keep reading. Verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan, 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 came out of the same coast. So, so here's a Canaanite woman that came out of the same coast. This is not an Israelite woman. So we have a situation going on where another woman from another nation is coming to Christ. Can you read? Heaven, select And cry unto him, saying, have mercy on me, oh, so, oh Lord. So this woman is begging for mercy. Why is she begging for mercy? Keep reading. Thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. So everybody is saying that Christ is coming back for everybody on the face of the planet. And here we are in the Bible with a nation from another, or a woman from another nation is coming to Christ and saying that my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Please help me. Now this is not an Israelite woman. This is a woman outside of the nation of Israel. Keep reading. Verse 23. But he answered her no word. Now Christ ignored this woman. Why is Christ ignoring this woman? Well, the Bible explains that as well. Keep reading. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away. And the disciples said, told, his, told, told Christ, get this woman the hell away from us too. Why? Because she's not an Israelite. Keep going. So she cries after us. Verse 24. But he answered and said, now Christ is getting ready to respond to this word, this woman. Not the dead Christ, not the sweet baby Jesus, but the alive and well. He's getting ready to respond to this woman from another nation. And listen very closely on what Christ said. Keep breathing. But he answered and said, I am not sent. Christ said, Christ said, I ain't sent. Keep breathing. But unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
Christ looked this woman in the face and said, I'm not sent to anybody but the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And guess what? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. There was a very specific prophecy. See, everybody hears about the, pro the prophecy you're saying when we read about us being sold over here in the slave ship. But it's a piece of that that a lot of people skip over. Christ just said that he was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So we got to do with the prophecies of the sheep of the house of Israel. You got that for me? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68 and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt and give with ships okay we already know who went into slavery on ships give me the next part Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68 and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. The scripture said we would never see our homeland again. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans over here in America that don't know where the hell that they came from, that's who Christ came back for. So we ain't gonna too much focus on the fact that Christ died. We're gonna focus more on the fact that he's alive and he's well and he's coming back to redeem the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. Shalom Israel, it's, it's going, going down. 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 It's that time again. Come join us at the 49th annual Passover. Shalom, this is Captain Brock Design of the IHBK down here in Atlanta, Georgia. Inviting you to the IHBK's 49th annual Passover. You understand? Passover this year will be held on March 30th at the Roosevelt Ballroom. It's the second Hudson Street, Yonkers, New York. We invite all blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians to this year's Passover in the spirit of brotherhood. That's what the Passover is about. That's what the ISBK is about. It's brotherhood. You understand? Me personally, I'm going to be bringing all of Atlanta, Georgia. Captain Marvel Quad will be bringing out Chicago. Captain Godoha will be bringing out all of California. You understand? And we're going to get it in. We're going to get it in, in the spirit of brotherhood. And in the spirit of brotherhood, you understand? You can't fit the bill. You understand? Passover is $200 per person, per family. If you cannot fit that bill, Commander Jim Yohanna will pay it for you. If you need help with transportation, Commander Jim Yohanna will pay that for you. You understand? Just contact your nearest camp leader or your captain in your city. You understand? Like I said, I got Officer Yam Yam here with me. I got Officer Tazahad, Officer Abaria. You understand? And we're going to be bringing all of Atlanta, all of Georgia to this year's Passover. Come on, March 30th at Sunday. All Israel is invited for the 49th annual feast of the Passover. Brought to you by Commander General Yahana and the ISDK. So you better not miss it. Shalom. Shalom.